Greetings, Guardians, and welcome to the Voice of the Vanguard. Today I have with me Sully from Sully Games. Say hello, Sully. Uh, hello, Guardians. And today we'll be mostly talking about TWAB because Sully just got back from his work trip. Yeah, and I just literally woke up, so I'm still trying to wake up. <laughs> uh, so we'll just talk about what we've been doing in the world of Destiny. Um, I don't know what you've been doing. Uh, just like random stuff. Like, I took the time when I was out in Pennsylvania kind of like getting all like just like the random stuff like looking up youtubes getting a lot of the lore pieces finally went and got like all the sabathune eyes done because i've just been putting that off nice um just like random little things that like i just wanted done so i can just kind of get back and actually like make content and not do boring things <laughs> uh so i've been doing uh, a few things here and there. I've I've helped out. Uh, I think Glass Emperor get both his Thorn and uh, uh, Whisper of the Worm because he's never nice. gotten that before. And nice, nice. yeah, just helping out the clan uh, here and there, getting some stuff. Off topic to Destiny, <clears throat> but have you tried Spellbreak yet? I have not. Download it. It's fun. Is it free? Yeah, it's free. That's fun. I think I might have got it. It's on Epic, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I might have added it's... it to my library, but I just haven't played it. Uh, I've been playing it's Marvel's fun. Avengers. Mostly, oh, yeah. So. You, you do have another game. Because I was, I was like, I think Savelle Break is going to be added into like my rotation. I'm going to sit down either tonight and play some while I'm actually like at home in like, my actual setup. But it, it's it's fun. A lot of potential in the game so i'm hoping that they continue to build on it but highly recommend if you're looking for something to pass the time right now if you're bored in destiny spell break is a lot of fun it's free on all platforms so cool that doesn't uh, have to try and, what else and this is not will... sponsored by whoever made spell break <laughs> <laughs> just Listen, for the record. if you're listening to this just know that like <laughs> Everything charge shot related, we don't make money on this. This is all fun stuff. We don't have that big of an audience yet. Um, if you want to help with that, you can just share the, the podcast. But yeah. Um, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, I also got uh, the Travelers Chosen. I got that done this week. And yep, I, didn't, same. I didn't really use it a whole lot in like Crucible or anything like that. I mostly mm -hmm. tried it out in I haven't used it yet, but... I played it. I used it in Gambit, and it's actually quite, quite good in Gambit. <laughs> I, I, I've just heard in general the guns like really good. Like, they're yeah, it's really fun to use, man. Because like the more your kills you get, the faster the aim downsides is, and like the re like basically the whole handling of the gun is faster. Like, uh, and then you can so... cash in those uh those stacks of um, what's it called again? Something light. Charge. I don't think it's charge. I think it's something else. Gathering light. Gathering uh, you can, light. You can cash those in in order to get ability energy back, which is really cool. Um, it's uh, it's a good gun to switch between PvP and PvE. Uh, mm -hmm. Especially, like, for example, if you're invading and you're, like, out of special or whatever, and you need to get in close with the regular gun, it's it just outperforms people. Uh, and then you can go back and then go back to PvE and start mowing down ads really good yeah and like they're continuing to like really kill it here with the exotics like especially like just this season in general with, this season uh, has like, the best the... exotics i think it's in any season yeah wither horde um uh effigy and then uh traveler chosen like have all been really good and then like basically uh hair apparent like that was like towards the end of last season yeah, it was. Yeah, and, like that was like another gun where like it felt exotic. Like, I mean, they're for a little it's really bit. Fun it was to use, man. Like, <laughs> it's really fun yeah. to use. Uh, like, so GG to Bungie with that. Like, they've been really doing a really good job making actually exotics feel exotic. Yep. So, and the lore behind it is fantastic. So. Yeah. So like Zavala, it's basically I think Savathun spying on Zavala. Yeah. yeah, and he's like it's, kind of torn. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know if he should keep keep his faith in the traveler. 
Yeah, that was something like I was thinking like what if he's the one to fall? And like and that was the thing where I was thinking cuz like you know, I was a huge fan on like with Forsaken and when they killed off Cade because like that was just such like an emotional like Every, even if you're not like a hunter main, like you, you loved Kate just because his personality. He brought yeah, so much yeah. character. Yeah, the most personality and character out of <clears> to the dialogue. Um, and like when it comes to like Zavala and like Ikora, like you kind of just only like kind of like maybe liked him because like of like that's your main's like vanguard, but like or you like people that are loyal and you know. Good and yeah. righteous and stuff like that. Because like, the voice actor is Lance Riddick, right? Yeah, I love Lance Riddick. And I, I just, I don't know if they would ever, like, kill off Zavala. Just because of, like, if you're, like, big in the Destiny community, like, he does, like, so much. And then, like, he's so loved by, like, a lot of the people. And he's a huge Destiny fan. So I was, I was like, thinking, like, man, like, are they trying to, like, set up, like, killing him off? And I was just like, I really don't see them killing him off i hope he doesn't get killed off but here's the thing they made the reference to illidan before right Mm -hmm. and he's like a fallen hero basically uh what if they do the same thing with zavala where like he's like this you know noble figure and he falls because of sabbath and tricks him and i don't know where they're gonna go with that i'm just thinking out loud here um, yeah, that, that's what, I was thinking. Like, I feel like they're gonna do something here, but like, I just in general, like, I don't, I don't think somehow they're gonna completely kill him off just because. If they do anything, but, I don't think it'll be this year, um, like, cause, cause of the, uh, the witch queen is coming out mm-hmm. next year, right? So correct. If we'll see anything, it'll be like the end of year four. Anything regarding yeah, probably. Ball. And then another thing, because, like, when, uh, you go and, like, pick up, like, the gun, and he, like, speaking about, like, what, like, all the people from, like, the destinations, I thought it was kind of really, uh, odd that Anna Bray is the only one coming to the tower. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say Jason in chat was just saying that, uh, Sloan, Asher, and Vance are probably gonna die fighting the darkness, which I think, um, Sloan and Asher might be. But Vance just went off into the lighthouse, didn't he? I think so. Yeah. Like he started, I, I, like, I, I can't he started remember that. like gouging or... out the eyes of like his future and past selves. It's so weird. Yeah, I never, uh... re- I haven't read the lore pieces yet, but yeah, it seems to be what they're doing. Um... And so, like, are they setting up for maybe like Anna Bray becoming like the Hunter Vanguard? Even though, like, we all kind of feel like, um. Well, it's they gonna had, be Aldrin. They had um, Lord Peace rec- or I think it's recently, but sometime before, where uh, Zavala wasn't interested in having Anna be the the vanguard. Okay. Um, like he wouldn't recruit her, which I w- and she's not interested in that. Um, which I yeah, I didn't really think because she's kind of like. <clears throat> but then again, Cade was kind of like always just kind of like by himself type deal, like stuff. But I I, I don't know. I just thought it was weird that she was coming. And like, I think if it's anyone, it's going to be Aldrin. Same. But I, I just, we've been beating this drum, it seems like, forever now. I, I do think well, we're going to finally been... see him in the game. Like, obviously, either at the end of the season or at the start of next expansion. We, we haven't talked about week. it since, uh, since like, we took our hiatus there. But, like, they came out with a whole bunch of, like, info dump on uh, next, next uh, expansion. And people were putting together the the symbols. So yeah, like and it's Aldrin. Yeah, like the planetary symbols like, are all there for the the triumphs. Yeah. And then one of the symbols looks like Aldrin's symbol on his chest. So people mm-hmm. are putting that together. Um, it could just be a placeholder thing, but we don't know, right? Uh, he could be the yeah, vendor yeah, for yeah. the Cosmodrome. Who knows? But yeah, it's it's really interesting times, man. Like for a lot of speculation. It is. It is. Um, I'm just ready um, for November 10th. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, the past few weeks have been su- super, like, uh, light on content. And I'm trying to get Reckoner here and there. Like, I try to jump on and see if I can get some people. But everyone that wanted Reckoner's already got it. 
Um, yes, sir. But I've been playing. This is a good time to play other games. Like I've been playing Tony Hawk. It, it is. And Marvel. It really is. So, been pretty good. Like, I would definitely recommend people to like. You know, hop in and play other games because I'm sure it's gonna get. Especially November is gonna be. That's super the, yeah, busy. That's the thing, man. There's like three games coming out November 10th that everyone wants to play. Yeah. Like, I was hoping that either Assassin's Creed or uh, Cyberpunk would get delayed. And I always, like, saw, like, woke up and I saw, like, Assassin's Creed Valhalla's release date got moved. And it got pushed up. And I'm just like, well. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Rip. Rip uh... the dream. So let's head into TWAB. TWAB. I think that was like a good quick catch up for things we've missed. There's, there's a whole bunch yeah, of stuff, but I mean, there really hasn't been much. I mean, I said I've been traveling, so like, yeah. really haven't gotten to do like anything crazy. But do I know we did? Oh, we did like uh, those random challenges in Scourge of the Past. But other than that, it's been nothing. Yeah. Uh, I put out a video for get, getting that Scourge of the Past tank triumph done for the first area. So you can mm-hmm. go check that out. Uh, that was when I still had my... I was like, it was just after my surgery on my wisdom yeah. team. Uh, that was fun. Um, Alright, so let's check out TWAB here. TWAB, uh, they start off with a trailer for the Traveler's Chosen exotic sidearm. And I don't know about you, but I think it's just a trailer. A lot of people are trying to speculate a bunch of stuff out of it. Yeah, especially the end of this trailer. <clears throat> yeah, I'm kind of right there with you. I think it's just the trailer type deal. Because people are like, oh, and you're like loading into the, the tower and it looks like you have your guns out and stuff like that. I'm like, that's just a little Leviathan intro. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. And I don't think they're going to put a mission into the tower. I don't know, that's weird. Yeah. And Zavala's not there. Oh no. I don't know. I don't see a whole... I don't I don't see anything happening. Uh, what else we'll is find here? Out, though. This little, like... Uh, picture's really cool. Right below the trailer. Oh, the one with the... Uh, the guardians and stuff mm-hmm. yeah they put out a bunch of stuff for regarding their anniversary for destiny it's been six years uh they joke around and say Yay. it's almost seventh birthday because seven uh next year yeah we posted a bunch of stuff on twitter about like what uh destiny has meant to us over the past few years mm-hmm. more, more explicitly the last year it alone has been the absolute best for us or for me anyways with destiny yeah because of all the friends we've made Mm -hmm. uh let's see did you want to talk about anything with the stasis stuff uh i mean we haven't like talked about it at all since we've been gone but like i definitely want to see all the other subclasses get like that redesign what stasis is getting so yeah, it looks really cool. It looks like a like a different like mix and match system where you can customize yeah, it a little bit, bit more. It actually makes the game feel like RPG. Um, obviously uh, they're gonna probably test it out with stasis, even though I, I, I Crucible is gonna be something else. I yeah. feel like the de- <laughs> hardcore Crucible community is going to be like they're gonna flip the fuck out. <laughs> yeah I mean, I mean i could be completely wrong and like this stuff isn't like it's that bad um but i think it's gonna be a lot of fun i think stasis is gonna make crucible like chaotic and i think it's yeah it definitely needs, needs a shake up because at the moment um everyone is not like crucible because of the the auto rifle meta at the moment yeah, like they, it's, it's, they people just say it's like it's really boring. Like snipers and shotguns and auto rifles. That's pretty much all you use in Crucible these days. Like, and I've I've said this multiple times. Like Destiny 
is not a competitive game. <clears throat> like it, it isn't like if there's hardcore Destiny PvP people somehow listening to this podcast, like it, it just isn't. Like I was not like I have said multiple times, like they should remove rank out of the game. Like the game's never gonna be balanced enough for like a true rank game mode. I'm fine with Trials of Osiris just because like of the loot that it involves, but like Des Bungie needs to make Crucible fun and chaotic. Like obviously you can't have stuff being just stupid OP, but it, I'm hoping we start to see just fun be brought into PvP instead of worrying about becoming like super competitive. And hopefully yeah. Stasis kind of starts that movement. Um, yeah, because there's two different types of uh, Stasis uh, abilities, I think. It's going to be like Stasis Fields and Crystals. Anything in the Stasis Field gets slowed down, anything in the Crystals gets frozen. Uh, we'll talk about that later, I guess. So, suit up. A few twelves ago, Luke Smith took some time to run through the changes to our philosophy of doling out rewards through various activities. Uh, so today we'll be focusing on core playlists, rewards, strikes, gambit, and crucible. To quote the article, here's what you expect from November 10th. We are adding a new set of armor for the core playlists, strikes, gambit, and crucible. The armor shares a set of new geometry with decals, uh, shaders specific to activity. And we'll create new sets like this each year. This set will arrive alongside the next expansion. So it okay. looks like we're going to be getting like a vendor refresh every year, at least for the three activities, which is which nice. Is, yeah, beautiful. Um, I mean, that warlock armor. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, I actually, I, like, I don't think the armor itself may not be bad. But, like, the shader makes it look really rough. Yeah, I, is that the shader? Or is that just how that armor looks? I, I don't know. Can you pull that up on the video? I don't know if you have. Uh, I'm, if yeah, I can. I'll throw it there. But, um, I don't... Dude, I don't know if that's, that's the shader fine. or not. But, like, the, like, the left Obviously and the that's right gonna ones... Obviously, going to be the gambit. Yeah, the, the right one's going to be gambit because you can see the snakes. It's all green. Left one's going to be Vanguard because, you know, it's all orange and blue. And the middle is Crucible. The Crucible one actually looks pretty good. Yeah, the Crucible one looks really good. I don't <clears throat> mind the Vanguard one for the Titan. Uh, I don't know about that. But... I'm not a, I'm not a fan of it, but... Um, that, that Gambit not... one looks like trash. <laughs> it's like you yeah. took it under the fucking trash bin and it's like, here, have some clothes. It, it, like, the thing is, like, it, it may not be... I, I think it, should, it might be just the shader uh hopefully but yeah like i don't obviously yeah the crucible one looks really good like it looks clean like for the warlock like the uh, like the upper part where the snakes and stuff that looks pretty sweet but then when you get to the lower half it's just like why is this yeah 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 I, yeah I, and then I, the helmet is like a warlock helmet it's not yeah. it looks like the last like five six helmets you've gotten as a warlock. like i love warlocks and i, I keep because I've, I've been messing around with hunters so like keep debating on if i want to like swap to a hunter main just because one like we have so many warlocks now but yeah the warlock helmets are god yeah they're pretty bad god off uh so let's see the armor can be earned by completing activities or through vendor rank ups weekly challenges are also being updated to offer avenues for players to earn higher stat packages for these armor sets additionally year four we'll see the return of pursuit weapons for those who may have joined our community in the last season or two these weapons have static perks but allow for customization the final two perk columns have multiple perks to choose from so you can tailor your weapon to your desired playstyle. Uh, Eagle-eyed guardians may recognize this beauty from a recent stasis trailer. And they're showing off the... Uh, what's the name of this gun again? I don't even remember. Beloved 2.0? Uh, sure. <laughs> People were just making a lot a big deal out of it on uh, online because 
it's beloved, but with a, a cloth wrapped around it and a little bit of gold. I mean, it looks nice. Looks sexy. <laughs> um, yeah, the I think the stats on itself are going to be uh, like whatever perks is going to get is going to be more interesting than mm-hmm. the way it looks. Um. Okay, our goal here is to have pursuit weapon available per season, earned through a focus quest. Banshee will give you a choice between Strikes, Crucible, or Gambit to earn these ba- earn the base model. Make sure you take a moment to think about how you want to earn the weapon, as you'll be locked into the specific objectives for whichever activity you pick. Once you finish the main quest, Commander Zavala, Lord Shax, and the Drifter will offer you an additional quest, which will reward you with uh, weapon ornaments to the theme of their respective activities. If you're omnivorous and enjoy all three things, all three will be, will be available to you. This is I like this. I think, here's the problem. I think this is going to be the only ritual weapon we'll have. You're probably right. But I, I, I like just on how <clears throat> that's being brought out to you instead of just having, you know, hey, here's this gambit weapon. Yeah. You got to play a ton of gambit even though you don't like gambit, but you want this weapon. This weapon may not be good, but you still want it just because you want this weapon. <laughs> okay, this weapon may not be good, but now I at least can choose between, okay, I like running a bunch of strikes, easy, I like playing Crucible, awesome. I'm really odd and weird and crazy, and I like to play Gambit, so I'm going to pick this. So, yeah, it seems like they're like going to the go... Yeah, it's nice to have the choice, but it seems like they're going to go with the one weapon plus the three skins. Mm-hmm. Instead of uh, three different weapons, so... yeah. Hopefully the weapons are good. If they can make like one, you know, quality weapon over three, you know, like trash tier weapons. Yeah, because I was like really like what have been like the last ritual weapons have been just kind of. Eh. Randy's have been pretty good. Yeah, edgewise yeah. is useful, but now it's like whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. And then Komodo, everyone loves Komodo. <laughs> Point of the stag. Are you muted now? I don't know. Am okay, I? no. Okay, you're talking now. Okay, I saw you like laughing okay. and stuff, but I didn't like no, I was hear anything. Just really low, but okay. Um. So now that we've caught your eye with some fancy armor, new sniper, let's take a look at how things are changing for core activities as you launch into your new adventures. November 10th, Strike Gambit and Crucible playlists are being streamlined. Starting in season 12, Director will be updated to reduce the number of playlists available at the given time. Feature modes are going to be Control, Elimination, Rumble, Survival. Both Survival and Survival Freelance will be available. Weekly Rotator, Clash, Mayhem, and Showdown. Private Matches, Limited Availability is Iron Banner. Uh, And they're also going to be having an Iron Banner Freelance. Uh, It's making its debut in Season 12. Didn't we talk about that? Yeah, we've talked about it before. I was just like, I saw that and I was just like, dude... DMG must be listening to the podcast, (laughs) (laughs) because... Uh, yeah, so it's going to be similar to the competitive uh, freelance. Uh, weekend, weekend availability is going to be Trials of Osiris. Uh, note, adept weapons rewarded to those reaching the lighthouse return to Trials of Osiris in Season 12. More details on functionality to come in Sandbox Preview currently planned for October. That's huge. So, we, we I think originally they said it was going to be Season 13, but now it's 12. Yeah, that's huge. De- adept, we- adept weapons is coming back. There's like an actual reason now for like to go to the lighthouse. Instead of resetting your card? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's one step to making uh, trials better. It is. Uh, I, d- I don't like the fact that we're still going to have like the four main ones are going to be control, elimination, rumble, and survival. Yeah, that was the one thing where like it's like, uh, really? Mm-hmm. All right. I was right there. Another year. At least have like control, control and clash, just like in a weekly rotation, like. As Hopefully, well. okay. So the thing is, the uh, I, th- if they're gonna keep the pinnacles for like these uh, uh, core activities, they it shouldn't be like clash is only a powerful, and then the other ones are pinnacle. It's yeah. It needs to all be pinnacle because there's no real incentive to play any other modes other than control um 
Let's see what else. Strikes. Vanguard Strikes and Nightfall. The ordeal will be your two playlist options. Each playlist will continue to offer weekly challenges and powerful loot. Nightfall the ordeal. Nightfall the ordeal will continue to feature matchmaking at lower difficulties and increased rewards at higher difficulties. Also looking to add adept weapons to strikes in future seasons. Uh, we'll have updates closer to season 13 on what to expect. This was really big in my opinion. Like as long as the adept weapons are in Grandmaster. I think that will really help. We forgot to mention that we tried a Grandmaster. Oh, okay. <laughs> One, that was like at 10 o'clock in the morning. And I had like three hours of sleep. And we we're like, oh yeah, let's let's uh, let's attempt this. And I was on my laptop on my shitty internet. <laughs> Listen, we were all and doing, we were it all doing went bad, fantastic. <laughs> okay, it went fantastic. You're so good. Okay, carried the it whole was. team. Um, but no, we will attempt Grandmaster at some point. Hopefully, they patch the stupid bug that for some reason made them want to remove all Grandmasters. What? Yeah, you didn't hear about. I mean, unless it's different now. You mean the like invincibility bug? Not invincibility, no, there was one of like the grandmasters, or one of the nightfalls was like super easy to do. So like people were getting like basically farming it for exotics, and Bungie was like, "No, we're not gonna have that." So they like disabled like I think all grandmasters. I don't remember them disabling that. That's crazy. Yeah. That was, like, the big thing that happened on Tuesday. I don't know if it's all of them or if it's just, like, one or two of the strikes. But I guess they're, like, the quickest ones that run and people are getting, like, exotics. And they were, like, no, we're going to disable it. And it's just, like, <sighs> there's already no content in this game. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> right now. Like, and obviously, like, we were supposed to be getting Beyond Light on Tuesday. Obviously, that is it happening got pushed back like understandable covid make sure the game you know runs good make sure it launches with next gen yeah (laughs) i I really do think like a lot of that was like planned yeah Uh -uh. but there's a whole other story that's being speculated but we we might get into that at some point Right, well, if you know what it is, bring bring it up anytime you want, because I don't know what it is. But. Uh, people are saying that uh, not necessarily they're going back to Microsoft. Oh, uh, they're going to be se. acquired by Microsoft again. But yeah, that they're going to have some type of weird relationship with Microsoft. They, they where, said like, they're not going to do that kind of stuff, like not have like uh, not, exclusive content. I don't think there's going to be exclusives. I think that there's just going to be kind of like it's going to be like Sony when they like I guess bought maybe shares in the like Epic okay. type deal, similar. Like they're not necessarily like first party to Microsoft, but I think like Microsoft is like gonna help them out people are speculating just because like you know everything is free now on game pass which is huge and then them launching the same day as xbox like just some speculation obviously who knows if this is true or not but and they already have a good history well not really a good history but they do have history <laughs> yeah um how crazy is it that sony hasn't announced the price yet and Microsoft I mean, is out there. Technically, Microsoft wasn't even going to plan it unless they leaked it. Well, they were sa- well, they said they were going to plan it the next uh, week, but here it is a week early, and it's like who knows if that was planned next week, right? Yeah, I, I th- who knows on what their deal is. Um, yeah, I don't know when Sony is going to really announce theirs. You would think it'd be soon. <laughs> right uh all right so let's talk about gambit it's covered last week gambit and gambit prime will be consolidated into a single mode we have some additional details on specific rule changes as well as development notes from the team and how things are changing and the goals behind them 
so we wanted to give you an explanation on rule changes coming to Gambit in November, as well as a key update from last week. First, some goals we wrote down before we started. Build a more approachable Gambit Prime, keeping the one-round format with a longer round, but without the Gambit Prime armor perks. Uh, rebalance the moats uh, phase to last uh, two-thirds of each match rather than half of the match. Uh, spend up, speed up the primeval fight compared to the Gambit Prime to give more of a feeling of a boss rush. Uh, we started the, with the Gambit Prime encounters full stop. However, without the Reaper bus, the large bosses that came in enemy ways were too tanky. So we pulled them all down to mini boss or elite. The pacing should feel like how Gambit feels for a pickup group or how Prime feels for a fully kitted team. Uh, we also play tested the having the moats phase target score of 150 and or having a heavier moat drain. But this allowed organized teams to steamroll even more effectively and not less. Uh, so we pulled back to the current Gambit Prime moat target and drain. Uh, imagine that 150 moats, that's like... If you're getting steamrolled, you feel even more impossible to come yeah. back from that. Yeah. Uh, so thankfully they're not doing that. Uh, we started with the Gambit Prime blockers, but pulled the Taken Captain from the blocker lineup. He proved to be a little too potent for 10 moat blocker. And replaced him with the Phalanx, uh, who can be tough to kill, but not as lethal. Since we don't have the armor perks, we also had to remove the 20 moat giant blocker. Uh... What do you feel about the the taking captain being removed? It's uh, good, right? I mean, I, it, it's good and bad. Like, I'm glad I don't have to like deal with him anymore with him throwing his black ball of death at you. Yeah. But at the same time, like, you also like sending the big black ball of death to your opponent because <laughs> it's really annoying. So it's one of those like it's good and bad because you don't have to deal with it now but that also means your po opponents don't have to deal with it now so yeah. uh, for the boss fight we started with uh, the game of primeval fight remove the timed slayer buffs increase the primeval health and potency of the slayer buff given when killing envoys the respawn we respawn the envoys every 40 percent damage done to the primeval so if you get invaded and the primeval is healed you have the opportunity to get more slayer buffs to catch up uh, the, fast, the, the fight length ends up somewhere between the original Gambit and Gambit Prime. So we adjusted the invasion timer during the primeval phase to match uh, right between Gambit and Gambit Prime timing. So how do you feel about that change? Primevals. No longer, like it. It's no longer going to be a, like a damage phase. It's going to be the primevals are up, you kill them, and then you get your buff. And then... If it gets healed up to 40%, and you do another 40%, then more on yeah, like spawn it. in. <clears throat> uh, so. I guess it's a good way to, for people to be on a more even playing field, rather than just stacking primeval buffs. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Uh, did it say anything about the invasion one? Uh, links? Uh... Or is that later? That's probably later. No, it's not. I could have sworn they said something about the invasion links being... Uh, yeah, sure. during a moat phase, it's from 10 to 20 seconds. Yeah. So, so that's good. You can't yeah. stack, stack uh, the evasions. Uh, so overall, this mode will be a little quicker in Gamma Prime, mostly due to the shortening of the boss phase and the removal of the larger bosses from the, the, the fronts. But one that still gives that great Gambit feeling that you all love. <laughs> uh, I think the removal of those what? bosses are pretty good too. Because playing Gambit, sometimes like not everyone's there. And you have like two giant bosses you need to kill. And it's like, yeah. damn. <laughs> uh, we see you hungry for info and we're excited to bring the heat as we approach Beyond Light. We'll have more details on how your weekly rituals are changing. Economy, Eververse, Sandbox, and more. We're looking forward to talking about these things like solo queue for Iron Banner. We have a few things left to tie up as we approach launch. I'm looking I forward to that. Out. Economy, Eververse, and Sandbox. And then the more has to be Transmog. Right? I need to know. I, I, I would hope so. 
my vault is getting very full again. It okay. is. Yeah. Like. I keep trying to find things to delete, man. It's really hard. Uh, yeah. So try them tracking. Oh, Jason also says that invasion is more frequent during the primeval phase. So. Get them banners. Uh, oh. Triumph trackers. Last week we announced some changes coming to the Triumphs in November. Various Triumphs and Seals will soon become unavailable, leaving you to figure out which ones to prioritize before the end of the season. Partnering with the community API creators, uh, there are now multiple options for you to create a checklist of sorts. Uh, and they list a bunch. So you have Dim, Light GG, Destiny Tracker, Braytech, and D2 Checklist. I recommend Braytech.org. It's probably my favorite one. In both of like function and just the look of it. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see what else we have here. Noble Quest to Vanquish All Bugs. Oh yeah, so they just talked about how they had a bunch of bugs over the past week. Uh, the Companion app underwent maintenance. Now it's ten times faster for all uh, Companion apps yeah. and third-party apps, which is really and, good. And this, I, I, yeah, I tried this out. I mean, it's it way faster, isn't fast. it? Fast. Yeah. It was fast with my slow internet, so I can't imagine with just normal internet. It was basically like immediately. Oh, it was, yeah, yeah. So it was great. Uh, Which is, I, I really love that they allow their third party companies to be involved with this stuff. And if if they didn't have these third party it. apps, I probably wouldn't be as hardcore into Destiny. Hmm. Honestly, I mean, it, yeah, it's. I mean, it's just so smart. It's less work for them. It's 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 just life changing. Hmm. Uh, okay, then they had the issues with the contact forms; those are fixed. Uh, so here's some patch notes from two point nine point two. Players no longer freeze while responding in Gambit. That's great. Uh, enemies will no longer stop spawning in the hexahedron area in the prophecy dungeon, blocking players from progressing. Uh, players who completed the Tommy's Match for Catalyst pursuit will no longer be re rewarded. It. Uh, Redrick's broadsword can now be. Uh, reclaimed from collections. Uh, Wait, play... what? Can it be reclaimed for? Uh, I think it could, but then, like, at some point, uh, it just couldn't. No. Okay. And then now they fixed that. Uh, players will no longer block quest progress by acquiring Calcified Light without the quest active. I didn't think, uh, I did not think that you could get Calcified Light without the quest active. But I guess you could. I guess so. Uh, some current known issues that they're working on. Player badge counts will sometimes not update when the Season of Arrivals collection badge is completed. Uh, the Tribute Hall's Completionist Triumph doesn't count Season Collections badges. Players need to complete the Exodus Preparation Quest before they can begin the Exodus Evacuation Quest. Which is weird because you figure you would need to complete the prep in order to do the evac. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That I don't know. That makes I, sense. I don't to me. think it should be. Yeah, I don't think it should be available until you complete the prep. But yeah. I mean, yeah someone needs to go back to bed. That's it. That's what someone. Needs. Yeah, I gotta stay up. I gotta get back to a day shift schedule. Uh, the artifact is sometimes enabled in Iron Banner, which they've had that issue before. No. And no, stop. Get out of here. <laughs> Uh, Bounties in Progress is sometimes not counted for her Iron Banner, which is really shitty. Uh, nah, that's a first. Oh, yeah, they've never had that issue before. No, never. Sure, they'll get it figured out real quick. <laughs> it's prior actually patched a patch right now. Uh, I think the only thing from this, uh, like, end... Uh, paragraph here or section was that there's a hint that there's going to be some changes to the 110 hand cannons so you might want to try and grab yourself a good one of those yeah I actually like I looked over this the other day and then I saw that DMG had like a super long post and I was like I'm at work so maybe I'll read this later but yeah it's super long this is just him talking about like his uh like his time with Destiny. But the the yeah, the info here is one ten hand cans are gonna be getting some changes, so 
I'm going to want to save one or two of those. Uh, I think it's the Iron Banner has one. He does mention an exotic rocket launcher, though. Does he wear? No, he talks about, uh, like, he talked about getting Gallowhorn, didn't he? Uh, it just basically, I had no clue what Rampage was, why Suros was considered good, or why anyone would care about an exotic rocket rocket launcher oh you're just looking for shit now you're just looking for any excuse to talk about galahorn <laughs> that's what you're doing but he doesn't mention icebreaker dng mentioned uh galahorn it's confirmed for uh beyond light confirmed <laughs> next tuesday confirmed right um so good twab uh looking forward to the future ones with all the different things that we're going to talk about yeah, there's a lot of good things. And really, the only TWAB that we missed that was interesting was the Triumph one. The other two were pretty light. Well, I guess other one, because this was... Well, they did release articles regarding the uh, the different subclasses, so... Yeah. yeah. Uh, we don't have any questions of the week this week. If anyone in the chat wants no. to ask us a question, go ahead. But I think we're going to wrap it up here. I'll just give it a second for it to catch up in case anyone's interested. Uh, but you can always check out this show. Ninja. On uh, on Twitch. I don't know when we record this show anymore. so uh, We'll go back to Thursday. Um, <laughs> I know. Well, I mean, because like, I mean, I'm back to a normal schedule. Yeah. You're back to a normal schedule. Well, I we're think from you're back to a normal schedule. Okay, but I mean, I, I'm free all day Thursday. Like, I, I don't have anything ever planned, so, like, we can do whatever. And I do know, I have a few guests lined up. Um, we might have to do a show, like, maybe on a Friday one time to get K Wits on here. Um, okay. Bill wants to come on. Um, might get some guests lined up while content's kind of dry, just be able to have another voice voice their opinion on destiny uh so jason asks us uh should the midnight coup come back and i say yes absolutely yeah why not it's it's one of the best hand cannons in the game at least yeah. or one of my favorites anyways so i mean as long as they bring gallahorn back then midnight coup can come back but <laughs> till then gallahorn first midnight coup second yes well Icebreaker second, then Midnight Coop. <laughs> but no, yeah. It, I don't see why not. Might as well. Uh, so, Sully, where can the people find you? Uh, you can uh, find me on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and at Twitch on Sully underscore underscore games. And you can find me, your host, Thomas, on uh, Twitter as C... Or no... <laughs> gameplay stuff uh also on twitch is gameplay stuff and you can visit chartshot.com for audio video written content uh, we're going to be doing some more videos on games as i get codes in which is cool uh yeah that was really cool that you guys got it yeah tony hawk yeah code in. i got a like, mortal shell i need to do yeah. so i need to go check that out yeah, i mean it's a pretty like <laughs> significant game to get like a code tony in hawk for, like a review yeah. Yeah, it was pretty cool because I just like I I I know Activision's like PR uh, email, so I just like message him and he's like, "Which platform?" I'm like, "Whoa, really? Like, that was pretty. That one's pretty easy." Uh, yeah, like, well, because I originally I saw that post and uh, self promote of uh, Justin reviewing it, and I was like, "Oh, that's really cool," and I realized that it wasn't out yet and i was like oh damn like that is actually like really cool like that's like a pretty significant game to get like a early code to so congrats on that guys yeah uh yeah so visit our website charshot.com audio video written content and uh share the share the site share the love share the podcast thank you everyone for coming out to the streams and listening you can always email me thomas at charshot.com if you want to be a guest on any of our shows and until the Guardians, eyes down. <laughs>